Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palitska International New Artist and Educator here and today we are going to do a beautiful design with the cat eye and the one stroke. So two in one really beautiful uh, items for a new art. You can have a wee preview of it in here. Yeah, I love this color combinations and I hope you really enjoy watching this tutorial. If you're new in here, hit the subscribe button as there is lots of tutorials coming up almost every day and a few hundreds to catch up on. I hope you really enjoy watching it. Let's start! <laughs> I will show you this view in the camera as well because I think it looks fantastic. So that's uh, the look which we are going to create. Really nice and beautiful. Yeah, and I show you how to achieve this look. So we are going to... I've got some tips prepared in here and of course check out the previous videos how to sculpt the nails and um, how to do the rebalance whatever you are actually doing. These ones are just a display tips so I can show you and I'm using the cat eye number 003 Persian and you can see it if I would apply the cat eye straight away into the white it wouldn't give a nice uh, result so I actually show you as well. You can see the coverage like it's not really as nice and deep and cat eyes looks their best same my chromes on top of the black. So I'm just going to paint a black layer. First so remove this one and paint quickly a black layer and for black I'm using the 183 which is a black ink. Just paint quickly the steep. And then give it a cure. Do it the same on this one. When you're working with the black gel polish, first of all, you cannot apply it too thick. So depending on the product you're using, you will do either one, two or three coats. But all of these coats needs to be really thin. Look how strongly I'm pressing with my brush. I don't want to leave too much product in there. Because uh, if you leave too much product with your black, then it is going to wrinkle in the lamp. So uh, never apply black thick. Because then the clients will have issues like a chipping product and that's no good. And the last one, I mean obviously with this one, one coat is plenty, it just has great coverage. And then once they paint it, we can move, more, move on into the exciting part, which is the design. So I'm just picking up the first tip, which is ready. And we are going to cover it with the cat eye. And if we painted it black, one color is enough. And you can see how much the color shade has changed if we're painting it over the black. And then the next step is I've got some magnets on the stands they are magnets they will disturb the process a little bit. But all idea is to get the magnet from the top, twist it a little bit. So you can see there is a part which is moving put it away. Then come up from the other side and do the same. Move it, take it away. Other side, move it, twist it. Look how the... is it showing, cameraman? It's hard because you put, but the bottom was... Okay, over, yeah. I will twist it this way. Come from the other side, move it. And you repeat this step until you're really happy. And then the last one, probably move it, move it, move it, move it. And that's me happy. Okay, so I've got created those kind of look disappear. 
and showing up. Is that pure? Showing up. Cook it. Okay, same on this one. And you have to really play with it a couple of times uh, so you get it right. So I'm just coming up one side and everything almost disappear. Coming up from the other side. You kind of like push it. Next side. And then the bottom. I'm really lifting my hand quite a high up so I can get to reach. And then we've got disappear showing up. Yeah, I think the camera is showing it pretty well. And the next one. And for the uh, cut eye on the black, one coat is plenty. And you can see it also the difference with the magnet use and without of magnet use. So of course you could use the cut eye without of magnet and then you would get those kind of look, like a kind of metallic ish look. And then when the effect is on, it looks slightly different because there are places which disappear and places which are showing up compared to the places uh, when the magnet is not used. Okay, just to show you the difference as well. Coming up from the side. And you can also use different type of magnets as well to achieve a different results. Move it. Move it. And then we've got, maybe I move it a bit more on the bottom. There we are. Okay, so we've got those nice effect. If this is a fur like if you have no experience and this is one of the first videos you're watching with me doing a cut eyes designs, I've got also a tutorial showing up different types of magnets and different results. So you can search those video as well. It will be in the playlist um, under the cut eye, and that's uh, kind of explain all the introduction to the cut eyes and magnetic gel polish, showing all the different effects you can achieve. So the video worth to check. Now this one didn't go well, so I need to fix it and I will have to do it a couple more movements. That's it. And then the bottom to show up the blue. Then give it a cure. For our next step, we have to apply the top coat. And the reason for it is the acrylic paint sticks in uh, to the rough surface. So I'm just taking the high shine no wipe top gel and I'm going to cover those needles. Next one. So just cover the entire tip in a top coat. And the last one, because I'm also getting so many different tutorials, guys, requests from you, I start writing them down and uh, I will be kind of try doing them. I'm sorry for some of them, you will need to kind of wait a bit longer. Some of them are kind of on the way. Um, but they will be coming. So this is the tip where we are going to paint the design. And now I need to buff the surface of it.
just so that you become smart. Clean any dust and do the same on the needle where we're going to put the design. So just buff it well. And when you're buffing for the one stroke and acrylic paints, you don't want too rough buffer. So you would um, either use the used one, so it's not as sharp. Like, cause, uh, if there is too many scratches, then uh, the paint might get stuck in the scratches and you wouldn't get a nice result. It's a not big deal when we don't paint much of the detail. But it is really important when we paint the detail uh, because then any product stuck in the scratch might actually make the design look ugly. So I'm just going to place this one here. And this is our pinky and the thumb. Really beautiful. I think cat's eye looks absolutely magical. Now we are going to use the cobalt blue. So I have opened the paint and then I'm going to squeeze it out, close it. And we are going also to use some purple as a lighter color. This is a really old paint. I hope I can squeeze it. Yeah. So I've got some purple and a touch of the light pink, which is gone. And now we can start painting. So I always, when I'm painting with the acrylic paints, I always keep the baby wipes on the sides just to clean my hands and clean the pots. And I've got this here. We are going to use the Demaster brush. That's a really nice and fine brush for a one stroke and a drop of water. Each time when you dip in your brush in the water, you want to remove this excess of the water, like let, kind of almost bleed it out. Like you don't want too much water in your brush. And then we are going to start painting. So this is a middle finger and I'm picking up a very small amount of the slight pink with a drop of purple and then the dark blue and then start mixing it well. Okay, the first load of the brush is always no good because your brush needs to absorb the product. So I'm reloading my brush and now I've got enough to paint. And we are going to paint some flower. You can make a dot just so you know where your petals are going to go. And then touch, 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 touch. Go a little bit to the top, come down, change the angle of the brush, and that's the first petal painted. And then repeat it. Going to the top, and the second petal is done. Pick up the paint. And now we are going to paint it here. The slower you will paint, the nicer results you will get. So don't rush with your one stroke. And of course it's a practice, like, like any kind of technique, you need lots of practice. So I'm mainly doing the design with the touches of the brush. And because the brush has the angle, it's kind of creates a really nice and beautiful shape of the petals. White, like the lighter color is always outside. Okay, so we have painted the petals. And now we can move on into the top. 
On the top we are going to paint another petals, just the same shape. And the touches of the brush are best like um, for those type of flowers. Don't shake your hands, like when we're shaking the hand too much then nothing works. Now I've got more purple on my brush. And when I'm painting, I'm also, when I'm lifting my hand up, I always go back one millimeter before the place I have finished. I'm going to show you that, guys. So load the paint. So I have touched and then I cannot start in the same place where I have finished. I need to go before and drag those paint. Like I need to start in the places before I have finished. And this way we can create the most beautiful flowers. If we go over the design too much, then you would take a wipe and you would just wipe it away. The old design will stay and the fresh one will come off just because it didn't dry yet. Very useful tip when painting one stroke. And a very small one on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to paint flower on this one as well. So just mix my paint. Go to the top. Then come down. I'm just going to remove the excess of the paint from my brush. Remove any excess of the water and then each time when I clean the brush I squeeze it in between the fingers just to keep it into the shape. Pick up the fresh paint. Again I need to load it twice. And now I can paint it. So I'm just going to retouch this petal because my paint was a little bit too dry. And pick up the paint again. You will feel when your when your paint and brush behaves like if it starts getting too dry, then just add a drop of the water to your brush. And I like to work with the mixture of few different colors, like I don't like when there is only a flat color, so um, I would use like on the previous one we have used some places with the pink as well, just to make this look even more interesting. Here I'm going to paint a slightly bigger part of the flower. So kind of like a two flowers. And this is a definitely a technique, uh, a must 
must learn technique and then go over some petals just to make them even nicer clean my brush squeeze it mix the paint well and sometimes I take a really long time uh, to pick up the paint because the nicer paint pickup I've got the nicer uh, results I get when painting Okay, now we need to pick up a little bit lighter color of the paint and this is going to be white to paint another part of this design. I'm actually going to mix even my white with the purple and a blue so I will have one light blue and one purple whitish The reason why I uh, have chosen much lighter colors now is just because we are painting on top of the one stroke uh, petals which we already created. So you need something which is going to make them stand out even more. Clean your brush and for this parts you really don't want to do any mistakes. So uh, you can see there is a light part and dark part. If I go too high up I will cover uh, my light color with hit the light color and then this is not going to be visible. So I'm going to paint the petals only. Mm, only let me show you with this brush so I'm going to paint my petals only at this parts here at the darker parts okay and now I'm just going to practice that so take the one side light color the other side dark color mix the paint well load the second Brand on your brush and now we can start painting so you can see I've got this white color and I'm, I cannot start it and go too high because it wouldn't be touch with my brush go to the top come down so we've got first petal touch go to the top come down we've got another petal White always goes old side. And we've got another petal. Another one. So basically you can almost only touch it. The petals where you shake your hands are too complicated. <laughs> And it's kind of only looks that we are shaking the hand. We don't shake the hand. Okay, so I have put this row of the petals everywhere. Some tiny ones. And the one stroke is called also mm, one move. So that's mean you can do like this and you've got the petal one move of the brush. Okay, one move of the brush. That's the petal done. Pick up the paint again. It's 
start up the angle, go to the top, and then go down. So normally when I'm working on the tips, I will keep twisting it like spinning round. But uh, some of you guys like have keep asking me a question like how would you do that on the client? So I'm keeping my um, my tip steady. I'm trying to don't spin it like this. But when I'm spinning, it's much quicker. And the client hand, yes, you can turn it as any direction as well, like upside down. That's not a problem. And that's how I paint it in a salon quite often, like when I would twist my client hand upside down. Now those tiny ones. So just really a touch of the brush. And now we can start adding the detail. So I'm going to clean my brush and when you're working with the acrylic paints, you need to remember they are drying in the air. So you really want to clean it as well. Okay, let's add those detail in. In the middle, we are going to use a drop of the yellow. Close the paint. And when working for the detail, lots of water on your brush. Same in here. Clean the brush. And now we are going to go into the white. So I need to squeeze out a fresh white. Lots of water in. Look how I'm rolling my brush. And now cameraman is going to zoom it in for you because I will be painting a small detail. Don't outline it too heavy. By too heavy, I mean not too many petals. Only some of them. Look, this one it looks absolutely amazing. It's almost like a bell shape. So I'm just going to indicate. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, I tend to always use my thumb for the removing the excess of the paint, which is not good. We shouldn't be putting the product into your hands. Okay, but what I wanted to show you guys is I have almost no paint on my brush and I want to show this curvature of this uh, bell shape here. Okay, and we've got a really amazing petal. That's enough outlining. I don't want to overdo it. Mm. 
almost no product on your brush, lots of water, like really lots of water. It looks almost like my brush is empty, but that's enough to paint such a small detail. Okay, look guys, like it looks like no paint. That's enough. Oh no, not enough, dots. Every flower needs a dot. <laughs> So I've got like a really old brush and I'm just putting a couple of the dots inside the yellow parts. Okay, let's do that on this one. So clean my brush well. Pick up a very small amount of the uh, paint. And just add those detail. And when we're working with the paint only on the tip of your brush, you kind of really need to ideally you want to have the product as close as possible to you because this small amount of the product is going to dry much quicker than a very large amount of the product. And here I will try to do the same bell shape. So I have just twisted. And you can see it how much the design is changing when we're adding those kind of detail. Much nicer. You could also um, add a drop of the purple into that. Then the outlining is not going to be as heavy. And I'm going to show you that. So lots of water in my mixture. And then it still looks lighter, but it's not as heavy. I'm almost there. Oh, here we've got another nice one. Okay, that's enough. Now we are going to add just a small white lines. So press it harder and then almost no pressure. Lots of water in there. And when you're doing this shape, I want to show you guys again. So I've got blob of the product on my brush, press it harder, it splits and it gives a really nice kind of leaf shape. And then you're pressing uh, more gentle, so you're getting um, a nice thin line. And this is an absolutely amazing design filler. And that's enough. Clean my brush before I start doing anything else because I really don't want my brush to get the paint dry on it. And look, when we put the top coat, it will look amazing. So I'm just taking the top coat and apply the top coat on the entire design. Absolutely fantastic. Especially that we've got those cat eye underneath and I think it just makes it look more interesting. And of course when we put the top coat over the acrylic paints they become much nicer, the design is much neater and everything looks just so much prettier. Got the particle of the dust, I don't want that. And you can see this one as well. 
So depends how the lights hit it. Uh, we get a different uh, looking nail and I think this is absolutely amazing. So if you liked it, this tutorial, hit the share button for me, please, so the others can uh, see it as well. And if you're new in here, you have to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials. Now this one is ready. So we are going to put it it there. And then the next one. So with this blue, the design goes absolutely fantastic. And the cat eye has those blue, and I would say even in some light, it looks like a purple shimmer. Let me show you the final look. Okay, I just place them nice. There we are. Oh yeah, camera says, camera one says like, now it's perfect visible. Yeah, so you can see all these different colors. Then it goes black and disappear, showing up. Oh, really beautiful. Not over the top design, really. Uh, and now that's your challenge, guys. You have to learn how to paint one stroke because I want to do more tutorials on the one stroke. I think it is an amazing technique. Yeah, and if you try, just hashtag Dorota Palicka on Instagram and other social medias as I would love to see your painting as well. And now glittery hacks and bye for now.